Closing out the weekend is the lone USFL matchup on the card. It's Houston hosting Memphis. Spread is a coin flip here. Uh, Showboats, the one-point favorite, and I think that's that's four for four road favorites. You would not see that in the NFL, I'll tell you that. Uh, totals are lowest of the week, 41. Forecast for H-Town, 80 and cloudy with 15 to 25 mile an hour winds. Bad day for the kickers down there in Texas. So first, let's check out the Memphis offense against the Houston defense. You see him here, Case Cookus. And his head coach, John Filippo, who I think Zook will be rooting for a lot this year. This was a guy who won the Super Bowl as a quarterback's coach for Zook's Philadelphia Eagles. He was he was on that squad. Who's that? Big Dick Nick? Let's go. Nick. Hey, don't forget Carson Wentz, too, man. Came in that year as a starter, and uh, D. Filippo works, <laughs> works some miracles here. Uh, he'll, he'll work that offense this year with offensive coordinator Doug Martin, who, if you're a college football nerd like me, you remember him from the near decade he spent with the New Mexico State Aggies. So what do we know about Case Cookus? This was a guy who was super high in demand in the USFL draft uh, once they announced that the Philly Stars would not be returning. I think Cookus probably would have gone to Michigan with his old OC, Marcel Belfay, but Memphis got him first. It's all about that draft order. I'm telling you that that's going to end up being more important than people think. I'm sure Houston was another team that was looking at Cookus in the draft. Uh, USFL folks love this kid. Everything I've heard has been positive out of their camp, but I got to go back and I, I got to do some more homework on Case Cookus because as an XFL show last year, we will kind of be introduced to the chef for the first time this season. I think on paper, if he can limit his interceptions, he had nine of them last year. He could be one of the better quarterbacks, obviously, in the USFL conference and 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 lead Memphis to that second place bid. I think Birmingham is going to be pretty much a lock to win the USFL conference, but Memphis can make some noise and, and possibly get to the playoffs. Um, I love this offensive staff. I can tell you right now, John D. Filippo has coached so many NFL quarterbacks over the years, nearly 20 years in the NFL, and Doug Martin around for decades in college football as well. So always good to have OCs with head coaching experience. That's that's super important. And as far as how Cookus and company match up with the Houston defense, I expect kind of almost like a, a Big Ten, two yards in a cloud of dust, knock them down, drag them out, maybe a first one to 20 kind of rock fight here between these two teams because Darius Victor, the running back for Memphis, is a workhorse, and I think they'll look to him to get a ton of carries in week one. Houston defense led by defensive coordinator Chris Wilson. Um, they are a little banged up in the front seven, so keep an eye on that when injury reports become official here soon. Um they, they may have some guys that, that can't go. Don't want to make anything official yet, but the Houston team's a little banged up. Um, and, and we'll touch on a guy who's hurt on their offensive side of the ball as well that might make you want to stay away. Uh, the impact player on the defense for me here is Reuben Foster, former first-round NFL draft pick out of Alabama. Uh, I still give a slight edge to the Memphis offense here under Cookus. He has experience against this scheme. Remember, guys, the Houston Roughnecks are not the Houston Roughnecks of last year. These are the Houston Gamblers rebranded. And I almost wonder, Zook, how many Roughnecks fans are going to show up that haven't paid a lick of attention to the UFL in the offseason? They're in a new stadium, and all of a sudden they, they look around. <laughs> Where, where'd everybody go? This ain't the Roughnecks. Like, I don't know how they're going to react if they haven't paid attention to this merge. It's going to be kind of funny. Uh, I don't think the gamblers are as good as the Roughnecks. Nonetheless, really good receiving core here for Memphis. They were kind of imported from the New Orleans Breakers, where DeFilippo coached last year. And if you're trying to get familiar with the, with the USFL side of things and you're more of an XFL fan, the showboats are a lot like the Brahmas in that Wade Phillips went from Houston to San Antonio. Filippo went from New Orleans to Memphis and brought almost everybody from the Breakers over with him. Uh, for Houston, head coach Curtis Johnson, 
is staying with offensive coordinator Eric Price. So let's look at the Houston offense now against that Memphis defense. Um, Price and, and, and Johnson coached together at Tulane. And believe it or not, Eric Price is actually a guy who was the offensive coordinator at Alabama for his dad in the pre-Saban days of the Crimson Tide. And I think that's why he's going to end up going with an SEC guy at quarterback, named the starter for Houston, Jarrett Garantano. Fun fact, back in 2017, Garantano took over for a young Quentin Dormady when he went out with a shoulder injury at Tennessee. So really a ton of former SEC quarterbacks in, in, in this league as a whole. Corral, Tamu, McCarron, Danny Etling. There's, there's a lot of guys. So if you're a fan of that conference, you're going to enjoy the UFL in 2024. You'll get some recognizable names. Just means more. So back into Houston, the skill positions. Let's talk about running back Mark Thompson, who returns as the USFL Offensive Player of the Year. Now, proceed with caution on Thompson if you're a better and you like DFS because he was banged up in camp and he's not expected to play. We did not get official confirmation on that, but Mark Thompson, I would list as doubtful for week one. He joins Jacor Pearson and Abram Smith. It's just a shame to see all these guys that won't play in week one. Uh, but this is an opportunity for Tyon Evans out of Louisville and TJ Pledger, who will split carries in that Houston backfield. And they're going to feed those guys. Uh, this is a this is a run first kind of operation. I do still give the edge to the Memphis defense under DC Carnell Lake. Uh, the boats are led by Vontae Diggs, who is a flashy guy. Uh, definitely wears his heart on his sleeve. He actually had a quote recently in an article on UFL board, and he said, and I quote. The rivalry between the XFL and USFL is 100% real and always will be. Those guys think they're better. Quite frankly, we're better. End quote. So I guess we won't find out, Vontae, till week two when you take on San Antonio. <laughs> but uh, we'll see. We'll see if you can cover Cody Latimer in that one. Uh, Max Roberts, another standout guy on this Memphis defense. He was a star for Vegas as a pass rusher last year. He'll get to the quarterback often. Uh, leaning towards the Memphis defense to keep Houston under 20. That's that's kind of my lean in this game. Garantano, though, listen, he's the right choice. I mean, a lot of people were surprised that he was named the starter over Reed Sinet. He, he He's the right choice. He'll get comfortable with this system in time. Uh, he has the talent to make a playoff push. And actually, I think really looking, watching Garantano in college, he's right up there with Matt Corral as far as potential. Uh, played some NFL preseason ball. It's been a while, but, you know, it, it was a while for a lot of these guys that, that hadn't, hadn't started a whole season. Even A.J. hadn't started a whole season before he came back to the UFL. So watch out for Jarrett. I, I'm confident in him. Um, but the, the boats are the play here in week one. D. Filippo's Breakers, I think, last year beat the Houston Gamblers twice. So they already have their number in this matchup. And I think that trend continues here on Sunday. Zook, Memphis, and Houston. Close us out. Who you got? Uh, you have a coin? You want to flip it? <laughs> Toss it. <laughs> I just feel like, I don't know. This one's tough. I'm taking Houston. I'm not sure why. I. I... <laughs> See, I left the tape on your desk a couple months ago. It was actually a little CD. It said USFL 2023 season. I wonder how much of that you got through. Uh, unfortunately, not I, was, a lot. I was not able to work through all of it without falling asleep. Yeah, I but, was just going to say not a lot. It wasn't enjoyable. <laughs> I um, fast forward to the end. I watched the championship. And I feel bad for saying that, but it's true. We love USFL fan, fans. Do we? Yeah, I think we do. If you're watching our show. I guess we'll we find out. <laughs> Yeah. I, I, After I, tonight, we're going to find out if we really like them or not. Or not. Yeah. But Well, you're going Houston, huh? Uh, yeah, I'm taking a slight edge. Flip a coin. Not sure. You like the under? Uh, you're staying away from my theory, which was I, when two bad teams play, take the under. Yeah, and it, <laughs> it's silly. I don't like the t – I, I, I said earlier, I don't like totals. Yeah. Um, And They're same thing. Sharp. 
this this could go either way. I, don't, I this is a stay away bet game for me. I'm not touching it at all. Yeah, I added it kind of late. Uh, I like the boats. I think. I think Houston's a little banged up, so keep an eye on that. 